Um, shall we get to the ship racing then? I guess we <laughs> shall. Um, just as a nice cap off for the end of the year, and a bit of a pleasant, you know, in the face of unpleasantness, a bit of pleasant news just tying it all together. Um, a lot of people will probably be familiar with the whole we are number one meme running rampant throughout the year. Yeah, yeah. And now what people might not know about this is that all actually sprang out of um, the guy who played Robbie Rotten announcing about having to go into hospital because of having, um, is it stomach cancer? I can't remember. It was something cancer. Pancreatic, I think. Wasn't it? Yeah, 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 pancreatic. pancreatic. Was, yeah. But yeah, uh, let me just look up the r real name of the guy. Stefan Stephenson, I think. It kind of stuck in my name because Iceland. Mm. Yeah. Yes, Stefan Stephenson. <laughs> That's something about the name that is. Brother of David Davidson. Kind of double loaded, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, pancreatic cancer. Yeah, you know, GoFundMe campaign set up. Um, it was such a convenient timing for that to become popular, wasn't it? That uh, uh, the one time he really needed help was the one time his, that his uh, content blew up huge on the internet. Well, you know, what more could we wish for? Well, what it was was the campaign directly led to the whole series of memes. And mm. it's actually um, surpassed its goal by 11,000. Yeah, it's done well, isn't it? And it, okay. it's one of those... It's one of those cases of... I hate to use the phrase because it links into so much awfulness that happened last year as well, but... Meme magic. Meme magic is real at a thing. Sacrifice to the god Kit. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Trump is John Titor. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm sorry. He's a wheel. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> but yeah, um, being able to harness the power of meme magic, and I'm using the biggest air quotes ever. Um, Your God is just pleased. Just being able to utilise that as a way of um, just... Altering reality, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, just yeah. the fact that people gave and gave. Do they do, like, stretch goals for GoFundMe? Do you, like to, do you get, like, double cancer treatment if you get enough money? Uh, it, <laughs> basically, the whole thing was to contribute towards um, living costs, that sort of thing, because... Yeah, the have plenty to pay for it, didn't you? But you couldn't pay for it whilst also then you know, having easy survival tactics. I don't know what I'm about. He couldn't, you know, live comfortably with what's also having the costs. Yeah. Um, in any case, also, not only will the money raised by, you know, this meme help him in his quest to care himself, but um, also it saved us from the internet cancer known as the Nut Shack. <laughs> it's the Nut Shack. <laughs> Big dick, baby! Big dick, my baby! Um, just just to quickly dovetail that before we enter the nut shack um, yes, after his diagnosis a petition was made for him to represent Iceland in the Eurovision Song Contest yes please which received yes, please. over 10,000 signatures <laughs> yes oh please 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 Absolutely. Please be well enough, Stefan. Please. Yeah. Don't you fucking dare, 2017. Don't you fucking dare. Ah, oh, why did you say that? Look at this children's star that I just found. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so entering the nut shack. Why would you ever do that? <laughs> You're just asking for trouble. Because shit posting. Somebody explain to me how how Nutshack started off as a big thing. Oh? Because, no, no, I'm asking. Somebody please explain this to me because I don't understand. Ah. Uh. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of lost on this one, really. Uh, I, I think it was just always legendarily bad. And uh, I think it came about again because of Silver Gun. You know, as in the YouTube channel that makes dumb video game remixes. Fleet Stone. 
yeah. It's stuff, man. So, yeah. Um, but needless to say, of course, it has a very obnoxiously memorable theme song. It has, um, and of course, it's just so unbelievably terrible. And it's, it's one of those projects that just has gone wrong in every conceivable direction. And uh, yeah, well, what can I say? People like cringe at the moment. I think last year was kind of the year of cringe. Mm. Um and in that respect, I can totally see why it kicked off. And the repetition and so easy beat made it very easy to mash up with other things. I think we are number one, it might have been easy to mix with other things, but the nut shack, it can be just interspersed with anything. You could probably just sort of, it's only a matter of time until sort of some cringe worthy DJ sort of starts using uh, nut shack clips as drops or something in. And so in, 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 in mixes, oh, please, no Porter Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to him, Potter. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, some dark star of evil DJing will probably do such a thing. Um, although that said, the best Nutshake videos there were were the ones where it was, I think my favorite Nutshake remix mashup, whatever you want to call it, was the one where where every time they say Nutshake, it shows you a documentary about how to turn a sphere inside out. <laughs> The first one's a song as well. Oh, yeah. High quality music to set listening for seven hours repeatedly. How to turn a sphere inside out. That is music to my ears. Uh, I'm surprised it was only seven hours, considering how many times they say it's the nut shack. Uh, it may well be longer. I can't remember. I kind of stopped. You gotta, you gotta do that thing in phases. I mean, does YouTube even have an upper limit at this point? Bro, I'm pretty sure that they can go on for days at this point. Yeah. At the upper limit. I think I remember finding a Notchak one where, like, every time Notchak was said, it was repeated by a half speed B movie or something, which was like 13 days long or something. Oh. <laughs> no. Why? Please, please tell me you mean B movie as in old horror movies, that sort no, of thing. You that wish, movie. you wish. You know exactly which B-movie I'm talking about. Oh. See, the thing is, if it was old horror movies and the type and the sort, that could be actually really interesting because there's so many that you could intersperse into that. But the memes, Jack. The memes. That's all the B-movie was. It was just waiting for 2016 to turn it into a meme. Hang on. D just thinking about... Bebo's, is it me, or, or, or does Donald Trump look like the giant claw? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen B movie, so I can't comment. No, no, no I'm not talking about oh. B movie. I'm talking about the. Sorry, I dirt. Yeah, the, no, the I know. Claw. Um, the legendarily bad giant bird monster movie. Yeah, I can see yeah. it. <laughs> Which is much more interesting than what we have. Emperor Palpatine, this Darth Edition. No, 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 you've got it wrong. <laughs> Thatcher was Palpatine. Theresa May is Vader. The only reason I said the giant claw, the face is probably too sharp, but otherwise, you know, it's, 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 it's the dumb goofy hair on top of the head. <laughs> and also the bug eyes. Uh, I know. I, I always thought, like, all of Trump's features are just kind of shrunk and... Like, like, he's so wrinkled, it's like he's he's fallen in the wash and everything, <laughs> apart from his bone structure, has shrunk. Well, that explains how his colour changed. He clearly got dumped in the wash with something very, very brown. Boy, this show is a great music podcast. I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> Stop me before I can go further. Um, okay, so... Not much more left to say. Um, we don't really have that much in the way of music news. Because most of the music news was overshadowed by death. I thought we were gonna say all the news of all the all the people who would usually give you news are dead. Yeah. There's no music. There's just me. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, actually, that I, I do have a bit. Yeah. But unfortunately, I've only got Swedish sources for it. Mm. Apparently, Spotify is in a lot of trouble financially. Oh. And they might have to get bought out or declare bankruptcy at some point in the next year. Ooh, that's interesting. But as I said, I only have Swedish sources for this, so I'm, I might be getting wrong translation. Mm. Honestly, I don't feel particularly upset about it. Every time I've tried listening to Spotify, I don't feel like I've had a very comfortable experience. They never have the music I'm looking for because I'm a fucking weeb, and of course, you know, they're not going to have that. Even when I've looked up, like, you know, American and British ska stuff, they don't have all the stuff I want. 
Well, his, um, I... the thing is, you've got to remember that Spotify is an on-demand service. So yeah. th this is part of the reason why I've got this show, so that more people know about the music, so more people can try to get the music. And so things like Spotify can be improved because... Yeah. It's more in demand. Yeah. The other thing I was going to say about Spotify and what I think is the, one of the biggest weaknesses about it is that they barely seem to vary up their adverts. Uh, perhaps that's just because they're advertising, but I have trouble understanding how you'd fail to find advertising for such a, you know, you know, such a useful way of listening to music. I would have thought, but it, it feels like when I listen to Spotify, I feel like you get the same advert every couple of songs. It's, it's never a different one. Yeah. It's, the thing is, adverts are uncomfortable enough as they are. The only reason that we can tolerate them as much as we do is because, I mean, like, YouTube is better at it because at least then you get three or four different adverts. Mm. Like, I have the same, I get the same shitty phone game as being hammered away at me on YouTube all the time, but because they, switch, they sort of alternate round in a loop, I don't really notice as much. It's not too bad. Also, you can um, skip the ads, which you can't on Spotify. That's true. Also, well, one thing I really don't like about Spotify is the way that the ads sound like dumb radio ads. I guess that can't yeah. be helped because it's, it's, it's just an audio medium, but it, I listen to stuff like Spotify and I listen to music services like that precisely because I don't want to listen to the fucking radio. Get out of here. Mm. <laughs> you know, I, I, I find the, that manner of advertising decidedly unpleasant to listen to. Just to put this in the way that an infomercial would, there's got to be a better way. Mm. I mean, it, it's one of those why why do you have to have audio ads? Why why can't you just have a sidebar that's got advertising? Mm, it's because they want to have a pretty interface, isn't it? I think mm. I think they probably want to maintain a clean looking exterior because it looks, you know, uh, like for example, I hate the way that Skype has ads. Oh god! I, yeah, think about it that way. Like they probably don't want to clog up their interface because that might come across as perhaps even more obtrusive. Mm. I don't know if it actually would be, but it might come across that way. Um, I'm, I'm not surprised that they're having difficulty in that sense, but I don't know. It seems like a lot of people use it, but I think there are competitors like Pan, isn't it Pandora? Pandora, there's Deezer as well. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know about any of the alternative systems. I wouldn't use any of them anyway, to, cause I generally you know, buy my music on a CD if I want. It doesn't matter if you have a good idea. If someone comes along, copies you, and does it better, you, they will inevitably be the one that kicks you down the stairs and takes your throne. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of unfortunate, but you know. Well, let's... well if you're only a other company doing it, if you're a consumer, that's great news. Yeah. Well, let's face it. The only reason Skype is still afloat is basically for two reasons: video call. And it's supported by Microsoft. Yeah, and the only reason that it hasn't been killed by Google Hangouts is because Google Hangouts has got, like, no press. Yeah. And no one, no one acknowledges it exists. Yeah, the only oh. people who know about... Go oh. It's it's kind of got a bit of a Fight Club situation going, where... <laughs> <laughs> you, you only know about it if other people know about it. I think live streamers talk about it a fair bit. But yeah, that's about it. Because that's because they use it. But then again, like even that, even we've moved to Discord now. Yeah, I mean, let's face it. I knew about Google Hangouts, as you're saying, live streamers. I know about it because of the Radio Dead Air guys. Yeah, I still think that Google Hangouts is, is probably the most optimal service for doing live streams. I think it has a lot of functions that are still way better than all the competition. I think there are some cases in some ways in which it is significantly better than Discord, but Discord just happens to have a very good interface and way of organizing conversations and things. If Google Hangouts had the same sort of settings as Discord, or, you know, if Discord learned a few things from Google Hangouts, you know, you would probably have... If you combine the two of them together, you'd have the perfect source. Yeah, you'd have the optimal experience. Yeah, I mean, but Discord you... <laughs> Discord has on its side the fact that you can optimise conversations, mm. you know. We've got all these different text channels that we can bung the relevant stuff into. We've got all these voice channels so that we can alternate who we're talking to and do group chats and all that sort of thing. It's very user-friendly in that respect. 
reckon you need to start a call either. You just go into a room and boom, you're in one. Yeah. Yeah. The only time you need to start a call is when it's a one-to-one thing, and that's literally just a button click. Although technically, what, that's kind of like what Google Hangouts is, does, is starting a call is effectively just a button that alerts everyone else that you are in the room. The problem is, though, is if you're on Skype, then, uh, well, the problem there is that it's hosted by someone generally. That person loses connection, everyone's fucked. Yeah. Yeah, well, Skype is pretty much universally considered trash. There's, yeah. Let's not sure. pretend that it has any purpose. The only reason people still use it is because people still have friends who use it. It's like Facebook, it's in that sense. <laughs> it only exists because people won't stop using it for a while. The only answer is simple. Murder your friends. So the only reason Xbox One is just... Uh, shit. I forget exactly how it's linked in. I think it was because we were talking about uh, Spotify, wasn't it? But, uh, yeah. 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 Um, I've noticed that people just don't seem to be using it as much. Um, it's... Yeah, but one of my clothes at work was like, oh yeah, I um, probably I've run out of credit on my phone, which means I can't even access my music because it's running this Spotify. Yeah, I think the other, I think another key problem is that um, you would have the same kind of problem with TV streaming services like Netflix or Amazon, where not for the fact that they have uh, their own special TV shows that they have exclusively on their thing. But the thing is, while that flies with TV shows and movies, that will not work with music because people will. The thing is, the way people view consider. So these things are very different because you can't just have music that's exclusively on the service because if they've made some kind of deal it's it, it works for video games it works for tv music i think that would be an outrage i think it has been tried before like when uh, i think new young went to like some specific server i, called, like, I think apple tried something like that as well at some point uh, no, me if i'm wrong but this, it, completely well, it doesn't work because people don't like it people feel insulted by the idea that they can only listen to a certain song on a certain service i think it's because netflix and amazon things it's just a web service whereas i think with all these things like spotify and so on, I, don't, I, don't, I think you have to have the program on your computer and uh, people. The problem, I think the problem is that just exclusivity in general is a shit. No one likes installing programs that they don't explicitly that you know uh, oh, that they don't really have a complete say in. And to that effect, you know, if you're told, well, if you want to listen to this music, you have to download our program and waste space on your computer. People reject that. Yeah, but, well, if I can download that program, why not just download the album? <laughs> My reaction to that is just no. I'm not going to listen to your music, bro. The, the general reaction is probably something along the lines of, no, I'm going to find someone who's ripped a stream of it from there and divide it into parts and put it on Pirate Bay or something, you know? It's like what Gabe Newell says about Steam, like, you've got to make it easier than piracy, and you've got to make it, you know, easier and more comfortable, right? And uh, that's what, the problem is, these music services, unlike TV and get, TV and video games, it does not make it simpler. It's kind of like an unnecessary complication because the thing is, if you want to make playlists, I think that's the thing, isn't it? One of the other things is that when you're, playing, when you're doing a digital like video game thing or a TV thing, uh, you're watching things one at a time. You're watching it in or in lumps of connected things. Like you're watching, you might you might be in a series. Whereas with music, you'll be like, I, you know what, I think would go really nicely after this song. I'm going to put this here. And then you're scrolling through, ah, oh, it's not on this service, it'll be on another service, or something like that. And uh, I think that is where the big thing, because it's lots of little things rather than solid chunks. You're more likely to notice the absence of things you want, or uh, locking in of things. Mm. Which is why I'm very hesitant about this whole Apple Music thing that's come up recently, which is uh, it's like, what is it, £99 for a whole year? I suppose that's not too bad when I consider how much Netflix costs, but... Yeah. but However... Uh, Am I going to enjoy everything with it? I don't know. What's to say? You know, it's not going to have ads, but what's to say it's going to have all the stuff that I want that isn't on, well, the stuff like Spotify? Yeah. Uh, that's one of those. If you're going to market a new platform for music consumption, you've got to sell it on what other platforms don't offer. Well, in terms of features, yes. In terms of audio, and in, in terms of just playing out music, people, I think what I was just saying while you were gone was that uh, it's it's uh, people don't like being divided. It's it's like uh, I think I was discussing this earlier, something similar to this earlier at work. Actually, it's um, it's not like Pokemon Red and Blue. People don't like having only half the music mm. uh, available to them. You want everything in one place, and that's it. And I think people might gravitate towards places that have more exclusive stuff, but the idea of exclusives in general, I think, repels people. Yeah. In terms, well, at least with music. So yeah. I mean, uh, it's one of it's one of those things. It's sort of like, as you're saying, um, 
what's to say that it doesn't just offer the music that Spotify has? It really does raise the question of, why don't I just go to YouTube then? Yeah, the other big thing, of course, is that if you if you say, well, here's all this lovely stuff that you can't get over here, you, know, you can subscribe to my service now. If people looking on the outside going in, uh, it doesn't matter if people have the money to get in or whatever. People will feel shut out in the cold anyway and be like, well, f- you know, fuck you then. I'm not paying that. I, I, don't, I don't need that anyway. It's like uh, the knee-jerk response is, well, I don't need that. Mm. rather than, uh, you know, the, the sulking, rather than what is, you know, rather than thinking, well, I guess I will hop on that bandwagon. Yeah. Uh, I, I think also when you promise exclusives with music, unlike games and TV, is that music trends and, you know, you, who's to say you're going to be listening to the same track and... Because I, th- I think the, the trends of what people listen to will be faster, so exclusives meaning significantly less something about the rate that which new content comes out from countless people. Yeah. Exclusives don't mean much these days because yeah. of... There's so many platforms, there's so many different ways and means of distributing the information and everything like that, that the whole exclusives thing kind of rings a bit hollow. Hmm. Yeah, I think, well, I think that's probably all I have to, I have to say on Spotify, at least. I don't know if anyone else has anything to say. I've been rambling. Mm. I never really used Spotify anyway, because, well, it seems that selection of music is relatively limited. I briefly used it, but then I realised there's better ways. The thing is, it's working on the missing link of uh, owning music and listening to the radio. Yeah. Because uh, owning music, the thing is, uh, the thing is, we have the solution to all of our li- music listening stuff already. It's it's called buying music. Yeah. Um. It, the, the question is, it's about curation, isn't it? People want the idea. The reason people will listen to the radio is because they want to listen to what uh, someone else has strung together in a certain order, right? It's the same. It works on a kind of a similar. The idea of music as a service is fucking stupid. Yeah. Uh, well, outside of the context of, you know, going to a live performance or, I guess, listen to the radio if you like that kind of thing, mm. which, personally, I don't. Because, <laughs> um, you know, that's it, isn't it? It's when it is, music as a service is only good for if it's being curated. Otherwise, no. I want, you know, I want it to be mine. I want it to be concretely on my computer or on my disc, on my vinyl or whatever. It's mine. I think that I agree with you there. I think people like 10 years ago were saying, well, music is a service now, as so many other things. Millennials, 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 service, 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 rent, service, service. And it hasn't really played out that way. Like, you've got Netflix and stuff like that, sure, but the only reason we don't own things is because we can't, usually. Yeah, generally that's the case. Um, well, it's very easy to work. It's called piracy, probably. But you know, the yeah. the, the, the problem is, is that there's a, there are so many reasons as to why you wouldn't necessarily want to do piracy. I've done it in the past for various things, but you know. Um, On the hand, in some places there's literally no other choice because it's never been released. Um, the thing is, though, I mean, like it, it all depends on how much you think uh, you're getting your money's worth. In the case of Netflix, I started up because a it was easier, and b you know it. it it felt like the money that I was giving them was going to be going towards making more quality content because they actually create content, mm. they fund content, um, and that's something that you don't, you know, that I don't have to be sort of. And frankly, if we hadn't, maybe we wouldn't have had Stranger Things, and that's totally worth it. Exactly. But the thing is, um, I think for part of the problem is part of the reason Spotify isn't working. And a lot of these things will work. This whole music as a service thing will work. It's because some of the groundwork got missed or outright overthrown. Uh, I refer, of course, to um, when Apple started putting DRM on everything in the iTunes store and saying, "Well, you can only copy it five times before it's just kill." And um, and to which, of course, people responded with, "I'm not buying music from you then." Yeah. Because the thing is, to create music as a service, you have to make create a weakness in commodity. You know, you have to make it to make a service function. You have to create the idea that things break down or won't last mm. uh, for it to make have an appeal as an eph- to make an ephemeral thing. Uh, I mean, uh, to make taxi cabs make sense to people, you have to make cars not as good. Is what you're trying to get across. 
Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, well, the thing is, taxis work because your car will break down. Yeah. Yeah, that that's a good analogy. Thank you for saving me there. I was oh. going to And once again, a point is proven that it's easiest to describe things in the context of cars. Yeah. Well, basically, that's the, that's the gist of it. Because the thing is, uh, if if we had if we lived in our, some horrible dystopia where um, piracy was impossible because of DRM mm. and DRM happened, then we we all had only five copies of our music each, and we were all on our fifth laptop, and we all we were suddenly about to lose our entire collections. Then the idea of streaming music feels pretty good mm. because then you know. Well, you don't have to worry because it's like Mad Max Fury Road, where the, the guy has just got the tap, of, the gigantic tap, and everyone's just standing underneath with buckets. Mm. You know, oh, goody, yes, please, please, Mr. You know, uh, please, uh, can I have some more? Please, can I have some more music? And, and that's, and the thing is, because they didn't get away with that, because people kicked him another fuss and prevented that from happening, that's what's killing this idea. Mm. And I, that's what I think is going to make it, that's what's made it difficult for Spotify. I suspect Apple will have a good long stab at it and perhaps to some extent succeed. And even if they don't succeed, they've got enough money to make it look like they have. Mm. Because they just won't take the service down. Because why would they? It would look good if it looked, looked functional. <laughs> so, um, but I honestly think music as a service is doomed precisely because DRM failed. Pretty much. That, or at least that's my... My hypothesis. <laughs> and yet you still get companies trying to put the animal on things, I mean... Well, it's because they have nothing, they don't contribute anything. It's, all it is, is a gatekeeper. If, if they suddenly started saying, well, we're going to use your subscriptions as like a grant for talented artists who have, like, talented indie artists or whatever, who don't have proper record deals or whatever, you know, and... I mean, that's a kind of a different thing to exclusives, isn't it? Because that would be... Giving us that would be like the. the Isn't what bank apps like, do anyway? Yeah, and um, Fox Searchlight and that kind of thing. Yes, exactly. That that's that's what music as a service should be like because that's what Netflix does by make, by giving people money to make good shows. Mm. And that would that would incentivize people to maybe listen to it because that way it'll it's not just a matter of oh we're holding this musician hostage as an exclusive, it's. We are creating exclusive by, you know, actually giving people the chance to make the music they want to make when they otherwise wouldn't financially have a viable option to do so. But the thing is, they're not interested in that. <laughs> and I don't think they ever will be. And also, for that matter, how do we find those people? It's easier to sort of find people who, all, who have already been involved in making TV than it is to sort of find people who just haven't made musical efforts and uh, are having trouble find, making record things, make record deals. <laughs> Sorry. Um... I'm tripping over my own ideas here, but yeah, I don't know I could ramble on it for ages about why, obvious, why, it, why it's failing. But yeah, rambling about ages is not necessarily a problem if it's on topic. Well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's just a matter of whether I'm repeating myself. This is the problem we had last year, though, isn't it? Um, I vaguely remember. I vaguely remember. Oh, pig gate, pig gate. Oh, ho, ho. man, that was a simpler time. <laughs> what a. S- <laughs> I can't wait to tell that to my grandchildren. Things were better in the year when. <laughs> when our Prime Minister fucked me. Because the year after, everything changed forever. <laughs> and that's why you can't have, have a national health service. What's that, Grandpa? That's why you were born on a snooker table. <laughs> Wouldn't it be uh, under a snooker it, table? Paying Thirty diamonds to have them. To, to be fair, he wasn't. To be fair, Lister wasn't born under the snooker table. He was just left there. No. I'm talking about actually giving birth on the snooker table. Trying to pull babies. Well, to be accurate, it's a pool table, not a su- snooker one, because. Well, it's, it's in a dirty old pub. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. It's probably a snooker table that's been de resized for pool. Yeah. Yeah. Um. To be fair, they were probably also conceived on the snooker table, but let's not, let's not get too into it. <laughs> I was born on the snooker table. I was conceived on the snooker table. I was born on the snooker table. I died on the snooker table. I was born under a pop song. <laughs> I, I, I was a Viking funeral on the snooker table. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Snooker table was another pie table. I keep falling off for some reason. No, you said to find the... Yeah, well, I disconnected for a moment. 
Mm. I don't know if you had the fiddle mouse sound. No, no. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe it's just me then. I don't know, but something's going wrong on my end. I don't know what it is. Well, is it a good, good opportunity to start wrapping this up then? Probably is. Yeah, so... Not as you ended with the connection of death to end all deaths, which is connection. Alright. Well, at least it's better when the death is house will suffer if you know, get a repeat of last year. Huh? Yeah. Never again. We don't want the virus on back again. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, well, I'm a bit lost. Oh, yeah, this became Atlantis. Oh, oh yes. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, um, anyway, um, yes, wrapping up. Uh, so 2016 was an awful year for music. An awful year for musicians, but a great year for music. Yeah, that's a better way of putting it. It was an awful year for musicians. Dear God, they were... Well, we said earlier, hundreds died, and dozens of well-known ones. Yeah. Um, so, musicians-wise, well, I'll just say this. Rest in peace, all of you beautiful bastards. Well, I think in a lot of it, in, in several of those dear magicians' cases, I think there's a quote the good from the beloved Emperor Palpatine that really um, fits here, and it's uh, strike me down now, and I'll become more powerful than you could ever imagine. That's only <laughs> one. What? And so we left the European Union. Um, whatever, whatever. Emperor Palpatine, Obi Wan, same thing, right? It's all space wars. <laughs> <laughs> space conflict. <laughs> It's all sports ball for me. <laughs> the sports ball just keeps getting bigger. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there was a lot of good music to come out and should check out as much of it as possible. Um, there was far more than we could ever cover, certainly. Yeah. If the music gods have been pleased with the blood sacrifice of thousands of great musicians, so we're bound to have a plentiful harvest next year. Um, but yeah, this year we shall be bringing more reviews out than ever before, hopefully. That said, we will still not be able to cover everything that we want to, and we will end up rounding out the year, most likely saying, here's all the shit we couldn't cover. Dear God, there was a lot of it. Coming soon, Clusterfuck with you, part two, Electric Boogaloo. Revengeance. I can't really use the Electric Boogaloo with that, because that was already the subtitle for season two. Electric Boogaloo 2. Alright, Clusterfuck the, the fucking <laughs> Yeah! I agree with the shit, shit storm titling system here. I think the subtitles should just be, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh fuck not again. Kek, please stop. <laughs> um. Um. The year that music took away our girlfriends. Just a cock, if you had any. And this is where I'd put my girlfriend. If I had one! Well, if I play my cards right this year. <laughs> well, the worst thing is if I lost my girlfriend, I'd be really sad because my girlfriend does music. Anyway, wrapping up. Yeah, wrapping up. Um. <laughs> So, to look out for this year, more guest reviews, hopefully some collaborations with other YouTubers. I'm going to be sorting out shit with that. Basically, this the show this year will be getting bitter, bitter, better and bigger than ever. Well, we got plenty of that. <laughs> um, Pierce, we're going to get you a proper microphone this year. That'd be nice, thanks. In fact... We should probably sort out getting decent microphones for all of us. Well, I'm thinking about getting one anyway. Anyway, this is... <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I'll probably be. I'll probably see everyone again uh, for the next yearly thing of drink. If I'm, if not before, you're not getting rid of me that easy. Yeah. Well. Uh, I think there are possibly a few. Scar albums coming out this year, so can always join in on those reviews. I haven't heard yet. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot you were in Scar, Dan, but I remember you telling me that before now, so. It's really Dan isn't into he's like us. Just listen to all my other stuff. I'm just that guy from Monty Python's Meaning of Life in the restaurant. 
I have everything. <laughs> oh, couldn't have any more. I'm absolutely stuck. In any case, I think that probably is just about everything. Mr. Crowsuit. Yeah. So that's it for the year end review. It's Happy New Year from me. It's Happy New Year from me. Hopefully, it'll be better than the last one. Kill me. <laughs> Later. <laughs> and check out Great Days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I entirely agree with that sentiment. Do not listen to any Denver. <laughs> listen to all the Denver and lament your existence. Uh, yeah, that's. Good. Please come on. It feels like we're playing. It feels like we're playing rugby with like a baby and desperately not knowing <laughs> where to throw it. A baby with a time bomb attached to it. <laughs> Is it invisible? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like Death Stranding, and whenever you sort of plug in the baby, you like swap it with the bomb, and you don't know where to throw either of them. <laughs> it's a bomb also normal readers. <laughs> anyway, come on. <laughs> Make it stop! I'm, just, I'm stopping recording right now! <laughs> uh, bye, everyone. Happy New Year's Day!